Hi. I'm going on an exciting journey and I'm thrilled to have you along for the ride. I'm going to discover the truth behind solar farms. Now, there's been a lot of debate around the topic at the moment, a lot of myths and a lot of misconceptions, now more than ever, given the UK's net zero aims and whether they're ambitious enough. Look, I think we all get the positive side, that having clean, homegrown renewable energy is what we want for Britain. But obviously, there are concerns. These are the problems as I've heard them. Solar farms are always built on high-quality agricultural land. They aren't great for biodiversity. They're put up without concern for the local community. And they're ugly. So we're going to have an open and honest exploration of these issues to try and ease the concerns of people like you and me. First stop, John Keeling. Him and his family have had panels on their small farm for a while. We've been farming this land for 30 years now. It's a way of life, but to continue, we need another source of income. So John, this is, a, this is a big field of solar. I guess a lot of people would have the concern that this is taking up prize agricultural land. We farmed this field a few years ago and it, it's grade free land. It, it's not the best quality of land. So when the opportunity to have solar on here uh, arose, I, I, I jumped it. It was brilliant for me. What would you say the advantage to a farmer is of having solar on his land? Well, financially, it's helped me. It's helped me to carry on farming, really. And, then, and we still graze it. There's sheep on here, so... So you can still graze sheep here as well, whilst the... Yeah, same. yeah. Yeah, the sheep are here somewhere. I don't know where they are, but oh. they're, they're here somewhere. They're here, oh, I they're... thought they were Maltesers. <laughs> Do you want one? No, <laughs> So I'm starting to understand better why UK farmers are exploring solar. John gets an income from renting the land, but he can still use the field for other things like grazing livestock. And John told me that he's increasing biodiversity by sowing a special wildflower seed mix. And for another sweet use, Nigel Colley has been taking advantage of this biodiversity right on his own doorstep. I've been looking around for places to put bees where there's a nice food crop for them. I found this on solar farms planted with wildflowers. And it all depends on what the bees feed on as to how the honey tastes. Nigel, tell me, uh, what is there for a bee in a solar farm? Well, with solar farms, if they're managed properly and planted with wildflowers, there's everything a bee needs to live on. When you first came up with the notion, did you think, hang on, this doesn't add up, these metally shiny things with nice bees? It was pure accident. It was pure accident. I'd got a, an established apiary in a, on a farm and they put a solar farm up in the field next door and they planted it with wildflowers and as soon as the flowers came into bloom, my honey crop went up by 40%. And you found all this biodiversity at a solar farm? I did, yes. They create a powerhouse for all the biodiversity in the area. There's no pesticides used, there's no herbicides used. There was a huge increase in the amount of bees, hoverflies, butterflies, you name it, it all increased just because of a solar farm. And all the animals that feed predate on those as yes. well? Yeah, it's, it's birds, fish, frogs, all sorts. We might see a fish. <laughs> So I'm learning that there's more to this uh, solar panel story than I'd thought. I wonder what else I'm going to discover. Apparently, it doesn't have to be high quality agricultural land. They can make use of the lower grade stuff. And according to Nigel, it's brilliant for biodiversity. So that's good news for the British countryside. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Why hasn't it rolled out everywhere? Andrew Blenkine's the man to see about the larger challenges for solar. I'm the estate director here on the 10,000 acre estate in Suffolk. I've been here for 12 years and in that time we've invested heavily in solar farms, but getting there hasn't been easy. Andrew, you're very lucky. This is a ravishingly beautiful estate here. Yes, we are. We're incredibly lucky. I think some people might be surprised that you're actually investing in solar here. Yes, some people are, but we find we find we get a triple win out of the solar. Uh, firstly, we can continue to farm, so we produce uh, sheep, produce lamb underneath the solar panels, yeah. and then we find that we get significant environmental gains 
And then, of course, to produce uh, fully renewable energy brings us quite a sustainable level of income as well. Right. So why isn't everybody doing it? I think some of the challenges initially were uh, sort of people's negative reaction to the suggestion. So we worked very closely with our neighbours and talked to them about what levels of mitigation we could put in place. So we plant hedges, plant trees, uh, but primarily we, we make sure that the uh, panels are not going to be invasive in terms of their visual impact on people's lives. Andrew, what would you say to people that worry about Britain becoming a sea of solar panels? I really dispute that. I think at this present point in time, we've got 0.1% of the land area in solar panels. If we move up to 0.3% of the land area, that will give us enough renewable energy from solar for 20 million homes, so highly significant. So would you say that, that, that solar is the answer to a, a, a native source of green energy? I don't think it's the golden bullet. I think it's part of the renewable family to ensure that we satisfy our nation's energy demands and help to meet our renewable energy targets by 2050 to reduce our carbon emissions and all of those real positives that go alongside that. that solar has to be a vital part of that solution. So where do you fit in? We fit in here because we've got the land available. If we can work in collaboration with our friends and neighbours, with the local authorities, with the national grid, there's some very easy, quick solutions to get some renewable green energy straight into the grid in a very short time frame. It's been an eye-opening journey, and it makes me wonder why there isn't more British solar. Solar farms can be built in low-quality land. It creates extra income for farmers, as we saw with John. And with Nigel, they help improve biodiversity, which in turn creates new local sources of income. Andrew showed solar farms can be built in sympathy with our British landscape, with careful consideration of the communities they're placed in. So, finally, on a nationwide scale, Solar farms aren't the only way to provide homegrown green energy, but they could play a vital role, and they should. <laughs>